The next entrepreneur is Swedish-born Erika Nilsson Humphrey, whose online clothing company targets men who don't want to shop till they drop. My husband wasn't maybe the best dressed man when I met him. Now he looks awesome. <laughs> the fashionista has a plan in place for facing the dragons. When I walk into the den, then I would just say, OK, they are human beings. I'm going to present to them something that I'm very, very proud of. Hello, dragons. I'm Erica Nilsson Humphrey, and I'm here today for my company, Dapad. Dapad is an online personal styling service for men. The word Dapad comes from dapper and pad. A dapper man doesn't have to leave his pad. We provide clothing from aspirational and independent brands in the affordable luxury segment. And since I'm Swedish, I bring a lot of Scandinavian influences into the company with Scandinavian brands and a Scandinavian mentality of quality over quantity. Men sign up online, entering their style preferences and sizing. They then get connected with a personal stylist. She then chooses a box for him and his perfectly coordinated outfits that's then sent to him. He then picks what he wants. We pick up what he doesn't want. And the service is free of charge and he only pays for the clothes that he keeps. I'm looking for a 75,000 pound investment for seven and a half percent of my company. We've been named one of the 10 coolest things in the world right now by GQ. We have been going for one and a half year, current run rate at 100,000 pounds, and I've been breaking even since January 2017. Thank you for your time, and I have a little brochure that kind of explains what that part is. Could I go and have a look at the product? Of course, of course. A well-packaged pitch from London-based Erica Nilsson Humphrey, who's looking for £75,000 for 7.5% of her online styling business for men. First to analyse the e-commerce venture is the already dapper Tej Lalvani. Hi, Erica. I hope I know a thing or two about uh, styling myself, so uh, for me that product probably wouldn't be a right fit, but I can understand the need for guys who would like stuff to be picked out for them and uh, make it simpler. So, price per box? So, normally what we send out is worth around £1,100, and then the average return is £550. We, we recommend three boxes per, per year as a minimum. 75% of our customers come back, so we have very loyal customers. Okay, so that's three times a year, so about £1,500. Yes. And what is your cost? So the cost is around uh, £200 for the, for the box. Erica, it's the return that really concerns me, because every delivery has a return. 50% of everything that you're sending out will come back, and 100% of every box that you send comes back. So as you grow and scale, your margin's tight, but also that return is huge. And you've only got to have a few mistakes of the products that you put in it, and your average sale will reduce. Yeah, I, th I think but with all e-commerce and even with, with normal shopping, you, you have returns. No, you do, but, yeah. but, it, but what's typical is, uh, you know, depending on the product, hmm. in electronics, you have less than 10%. Hmm. In clothing, I think it's circa 30%, but it's certainly not 100%. With every customer currently sending items back, Peter Jones has spotted a tear in the fabric of Erica's business model. And Tej Lalvani is keen to understand the operation behind the shopping experience. Who actually picks out what each customer wants? It's, it's me. It's you? Yeah, after they filled in the, the, the form online. So we ask them, okay, what colours do you like? How do you like your collar? How do you like your neckline? All of these sort of things. Do you go and buy the stock at that point or do you already have stock sitting that you... We have stock sitting. Wow, so you're holding a lot of inventory. How much of inventory are you holding? 40,000 in wholesale. So you've got 40,000 pounds of stock. It's going to go out of season. Can I just dig a little bit on this process and how personal and tailored it is? Mm -hmm. Why am I feeling that um, the ideal shirt will be the one that actually sits in your stock room? Yeah, I mean, ob ob obviously it's, it's, it, we, we have stock, but we have a range of shirts as well. So if the guy says, I really like checks and I really like colours, well... £40,000 of stock must be a very small range of different sizes. 
you know, you're bound to want to sell one of these items. I, I, I agree with that, but also like oh. I think that there's also actually a, a beauty in, in actually being small and having having kind of a niche product and being an, an, a niche company where people actually know what they're gonna kind of get and they know. I mean, well, they're gonna get something out of your stock cupboard, which isn't very big. Jenny Campbell is not convinced that Erica's personal service is always completely bespoke. And now to Kusuliman, the dragon with 40 years' experience in the fashion industry, is about to give Erica the benefit of his wisdom. Scandinavian brands at the moment in the mid-market are cool. However, it's very difficult to find somebody who's going to spend, on average, five to six hundred pounds on every delivery. And the thing is, how do you get to them? People got to know about you. So we have had very good press and PR, as I said, like we've been in How to Spend It. I think we won Best in Test for quite, uh, like in the Daily Mail and, the, and GQ. Then there are, I guess, quite more inexpensive ways of, of partnering. I partnered, for example, with a, a private jet company. I'm looking to partner up with a boutique hotel kind of booking, booking site. No. No? <laughs> no. I'm going to tell you who you should partner up with. You should partner with all the banks. But, yes, you so... You should go to the banks and yeah. say, we'll offer all your clients 20-25% discount, or even 30% on their first buy. So that, that, that's a natural for you. Yeah, no, I agree. You agree? So that, that, that's 10% for free. Advice from the clothing retail king at a knockdown price, as he suggests a well-suited clientele for Erica to target. But for Deborah Meaden, this kind of personal shopping is an all too familiar experience. My husband uses a service exactly like this. I had to find out who this woman was yeah. that he was speaking to on a regular basis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then getting gifts through the, through the post. So, you know, all of that, I'm afraid, exists. That doesn't differentiate you. I guess what I'm looking for here is the, dif is the difference. So, basically, I, I'm the company at the moment, and I think I am very, very good at what I'm doing. It is a beautiful box that comes. It's beautifully wrapped. You open a little cellophane which says handpicked in London with love. And I am Swedish and I, I, I've always said it like it's a very important part of my company that we are Scandinavian with Scandinavian brands, Scandinavian influences. And, and then I think... See, there's your pitch right there. There was your pitch <gasps> right there. Erica, I don't get the brand Dapad. I want it to say Erica's wardrobe or something. And then everyone's talking about, is it Erica who looks after you or, you know, just take a step back and use your customers to help to grow you as, as the dresser. But at the moment, you don't have a business that's investable. So good luck, but I'm out. Jenny Campbell exits first, concerned that Erica needs to rethink her company image. And Peter Jones is wondering whether the entrepreneur has underestimated the financial burdens on a new fashion business. You've got a brand starting from nothing. There's a huge amount of money that's required now to build this up. Have you got any other money? I put in my own money into this How this much have company? you put in so far? I put in £200,000. Wow. 200,000. Mm -hmm. This is incredibly tough, really tough business. The money that you need for launch, that se this 75,000, if you want to do this properly, is probably a couple of weeks worth of funding. I... It's... I'm struggling. It's something that I, I just can't see a way forward without huge capital. So, sadly, Erica, I'm out. Erica, I think this is a tough old marketplace. 
you've got ahead of you the difficult bit because as you grow, you will become the same as everybody that's rushing into the subscription type model or the model that says we'll deliver a box to you and whatever. And you need a lot of cash to get you over that particular hump. So I'm really sorry, Erica, but it's just not one for me. I'm out. Erica, my real concern is where the, the future is going. And I think brands like net porter ASOS, they're already holding a massive amount of stock and a huge range. All they have to do is get a personal stylist to come on board, have the software, and straight away offer that service to their customers. The big boys are going to come in and, you, and it's going to affect your business model. So, um, you know, for that reason, I unfortunately won't be investing today. I'm out. Tej Lalvani's departure leaves only Tuka Suleiman still to declare his hand. Could Erica's styling service be a tailor-made addition to his fashion portfolio? You definitely can be proud of yourself. Thank you. Because you've taken your own money yeah. and you've taken it to this point. But I, I believe that if, if you'd said, how can I take this to another level by doing the fundamental things? One, reduce your returns. Two, a better communication with your customer, as I said to you. Three, then going out and looking for investment, but not 75,000 pounds. I would say you should be going and asking for a million pounds. Yeah. Repackage this, go for a big investment, and take it to another level. But I'm not going to invest in you today, and I'm out. OK, thank you. The business didn't prove to be a perfect fit for any of the dragons, and Erica leaves the den without the £75,000 she was hoping for. That is one seriously tough business, Whoa. without a doubt. Yeah. I know exactly how I differentiate myself, and I'm a bit like maybe disappointed that I didn't communicate that in the correct way, but it's too late now. <laughs>